Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Really Ghost Thief Gold. I've played through the mission once already up to a certain point, but I got interrupted and I had some science to do anyway on how to perfect thief it. I'm glad to report that it is possible to perfect thief the mission, and with a couple of exceptions for loot and a, one more exception at the very end, it's even possible to supreme ghost it. So we're going to go as supreme as possible, as usual. I'm going to load the save from the end of Undercover and start there. While the ambient noise is quiet, let me give you my little intro to the mission itself. I think that this sadly had the potential to be far and away the best mission in the game. I think that the entire time you're moving through the cathedral with the eye vaguely taunting you, surrounded by undead with the amazingly creepy ambient sounds and beautiful, scary environment, the mission is just great. But to me, at least, one of the biggest parts of the thief experience is the sense of isolation that comes from being the only person on your side, at least, in whatever mission you happen to be sneaking through. I think that it would break the vibe of the game in any mission to interact with a friendly character. And they have you do so repeatedly in this mission, of all missions, in the form of Brother Muris. Now, I don't mind using him to set up the objectives to sneak into all the other parts of the cloister and steal all the stuff, that's fine, but just the inclusion of a friendly character here in the evil haunted cathedral, the scary, otherwise scariest mission in the game, just completely breaks the vibe of it for me, which is why it's not my favorite mission. It comes in behind the sword, because I just don't feel like this game is about friendly characters. But anyway, I've been ranting too long. I'm just sad about the wasted potential here. Let's move to, here's the end of Undercover. I've separately uploaded the briefing for return as always. Our objectives look deceptively simple, so you know it's going to be more complicated than this, but right now it just says grab the eye, leave the cathedral area. Let's get started. As always, no purchases needed. Now it is possible to object stack and keep the talismans, but I think that's cheeky and I don't really see any reason to do it. Warning, great evil resides in this place and it is no longer fit for men. The doors are sealed to protect us from that which lies within. Do not remain here. That said, since it is possible to stack, using the talismans might qualify as a supreme ghost bust, but you wouldn't be able to come back outside, so that would also be a supreme bust, leaving the stack where it was. So I guess this might technically be a bust, but I'm not going to report it as such. Listen. So, you are returned with a talisman to Claraman. I did not think it likely that you would succeed. Bring one skull with us as we move in. I'll have to bring it back later. One nice thing for Supreme Ghosters is that the doors shut on their own. It's also creepy. Though these be perhaps the final moments of our beloved cathedral and mine mortal life, I shall faithfully chronicle to the end. A great evil magic hath befallen us, and we battle with demon kind on all sides. Our own fallen brethren rise from death and turn on us, cold light of flame in their eyes. Our mighty doors availed us naught, for the assault was from within. Soon I shall be found and slain like the others. May the builder save our souls. Be careful here, because the floor is tiled, and if you make a lot of noise, I think you can be heard. Well, someone heard me drop my skull. Oops. Forgot to redo my quick save. That was silly of me. Succeed. 
There we go. Now my quick save will keep us in the mission, which is what we want. We have to pick this door open, there's no key for it out there. Which means we won't have to relock it later. Let's grab the other skull from out in the hallway. Bring it in too. First we'll read. Brother Gerard, the behavior we have repeatedly seen exhibited is truly most troublesome. The eye has been moved once again to the vault in the cellar. This eve, please you post two sentinels to guard it. Thus we shall determine how it is that we find it floating over the high altar each morn. While we're on a pause, I'll just say that the way Brother Muris breaks the vibe for me simply playing, hearing me talk probably ruins a lot of the scary vibe for anyone watching, so even more so than usual, I'm going to try to be as quiet as possible. I'll just explain my actions where I do something weird, but I really want the full screen high def video to have the impact it should, so I'm going to minimize my talking and do most of it at pauses like this when I have something to read. Now we brought those two skulls into this room because we need to stack some objects in order to get to the second floor where there's a piece of loot. and. Actually, stacking objects is the only way to get to that loot, so... First, grab this goblet. Total 15. The goblet's worth 15. Do normal stacking. Look straight up. Use the skulls and both potions you start with and your stack should be tall enough. <laughs> Here's a necklace in the corner, worth 200, brings the total to 215. Pick your potions back up, and we need to replace the skulls. Don't forget the habit of closing doors behind you, but it is nice not to have to do it here. So there are three prone zombies in this room, 
two patrolling haunts and this one stationary haunt. distance trigger that zombie. We also don't want a first alert, so we need to move extremely slowly here. The No one ever really talks about doing this, at least not that I've read on the forums or anywhere else, but if you need to move really slowly, walking backwards works amazingly well. As long as you also creep crouch like usual. We're skipping it, but there's a holy water font over behind the altar. It has a vial of holy water if you're interested in picking up such things. <gasps> that base is worth 50, it brings our total to 265. Roping up is easiest. Make sure you fire the rope so that you can mantle up on the very south end of the balcony like I did. That's the easiest way to avoid alerts. Move quickly in here because the zombie does patrol into this room, so let's read this. I mislike the wisdom that so many of the mechanical systems in the compound doth rely upon the proper functioning of the machine room in the cathedral cellar. Our enemies might attempt sabotage, turning our short sight against us. Let us set about re-engineering such that each mechanical system is powered by more local equipment. Well, makes sense to me. Once you're down in this room, you're safe. There are just two candlesticks here worth 50 each. They bring our total to 365. <sighs> you can hear that zombie leave. You can follow him out. And when he passes this door, we're going to head south down the hall. The gold hammer on the windowsill worth 75 brings our total to 440. Same idea here, we're gonna rope up, but be careful because you're not perfectly shadowed. So if you're watching out for alerts, pay attention. The trollers might just spot us. Garrett might also indulge his historical failure to mantle. Let's try again. <gasps> Nothing up here except two water arrows in the chest. Now, some people claim that while the haunt is turned to face southwest or west, that's enough that you can sneak across the beam without getting a first alert from him. I always get a first alert if I try that. So what I do is drop down to the second level, sneak over here, put a rope in the beam past the light, 
then wait for his back to turn and climb up this side. That way I've always avoided any alerts. Probably, probably good to wait until he's turned all the way west, though. <clears throat> we do want that diamond, of course. Wait till his back is turned again and just squeak out to grab it. That's worth a hundred, brings our total to 540. Here, there's a vase worth 50, brings our total to 590. There's also the corpse of Brother Martello. Now, in my first playthrough, I made sure to hear every single Brother Muris dialogue, but since I'm really ghosting now, sneaking all the way back up to this corner of the cathedral would be incredibly painful. And anyway, we can still hear the Muris dialogue. We're just skipping a little extra sneaking which will be very difficult after the silent alarm goes off from grabbing the eye, so I'm gonna bring Martello with me now. So I don't have to come back up here. Same thing as before, wait until he's turned to the west, drop down to the second floor, then rope up on the other side of this patch of light. No matter how slowly I move while he's facing west, if I stay on the beam, I always get an alert, but it's pretty easy to go down and up. <laughs> Once you're down here, drop Brother Martello. Place a rope arrow, grab Brother Martello, and I think, I think we're shadowed enough on this side that we don't have to wait for him to turn. Now how Garrett mantles while carrying the corpse is anyone's guess, but he pulls it off. So now we're gonna... Head over to the other side of the third floor. Again, careful here because you're not fully shadowed. I say not fully shadowed. We're barely shadowed at all. This chest has a gold goblet worth 25, total 615. This chest has a ring worth 100, total 715, but we have to pick it open. It cannot be relocked so we don't have to worry about it. Over here, I think you stay shadowed well enough to just cross. Now this is the armory. Let me pause and explain. The whole mission culminates in us finally getting the key to this door and getting the explosive charge from inside. The problem is that blowing open the cloister gate is property damage and is a bust even of normal ghost. So we can't do it. Particularly since there is another option. We can use a couple of crates and get out of the cathedral that way. So. I'm not even going to come and get the explosive device out of the armory, but that's the way the designers intended you to exit the mission. So if you're not playing Ghost within the rules or Supreme Ghost within the rules, 
Once Brother Muris gives you the armory key, this is where you need to come. But that won't happen until the very end of the mission anyway. The chest has two moss arrows, which I am, of course, not interested in. The staircase has four exits. That was level three. Here's the second floor. We want to exit the first floor. There's also a basement, which we'll come back to in a moment. Inside the basement is a door that we can pick open, but it is relockable with a key that we can create in the Tenor Factory. So I think Supreme demands that we relock that door. Let's read. A novice passing the cemetery yesterday eve said he saw a strange glowing figure walking therein, but upon investigating found that the apparition had vanished. Those who heard his story laughed and blamed his vision on an excess of ale, but I am not so quick to dismiss it. I remember the burial of our beloved brother Muris last week and the feeling that something was wrong. I shan't relate the story to brother Martello since he was much attached to brother Muris and mourns his loss still. Where are you going? You come all this way, only to leave me as I fall within your grasp. As much as I don't really like Thief 3, I have to say bringing the eye back at the end of that game was an inspired decision on the part of the writers. Out here in the cloister, there's a hammer spirit. These stairs have seen better days that just patrols in the garden. And on that upper level, there are two patrolling zombies and a patrolling hammer haunt. Just have to be careful of all of them. I'm gonna leave Brother Martello here for now. Now out in the cloister are a total of seven patrollers. There are four haunts, two zombies, and a hammer spirit. And they can walk through that gate and turn around here, so. Just be wary of them. One thing it's important to know is that it is possible, if you get it just right, <laughs> to, to mantle up those stairs. I'd like to do it without being heard by a haunt, of course. Now, in addition to leaving Martello's corpse in that shadow, I'm also going to go ahead and bring down the two crates will eventually need from the third floor room outside the armory. If you're wondering why I haven't grabbed the eye yet, when you grab the eye, all three zombies and all three haunts inside the cathedral have a scripted alert sequence. A little red cloud appears over their heads, they all run to the altar, They'll search for you for a while, and then they all expand their patrols. They all roam around the entire cathedral instead of staying in the relatively confined routes they're walking now. They, grabbing the eye also adds a seventh patroller inside the cathedral. It spawns a hammer spirit. The point Grabbing the eye, of course, is not considered a bust. Because the alert is scripted, the rules don't bust you for it. Okay, we need to wait to mantle up anyway. But, after that alert, in addition to having wider patrols and there being one more AI, everyone in there is significantly more alert and much harder to sneak around. So... It behooves you to do everything you possibly can before grabbing the eye. The only thing I won't do until I get the explicit objective to do it is kill the hammer haunts. That would obviously make things much easier, but until I have an objective to do so, killing the haunts would bust my ghost. Besides, it wouldn't be much of a ghost if I just killed the haunts and then said, well, the objectives are gonna make me do it, and then enjoyed roaming around the much emptier level. Well, you only need two crates to make your eventual exit. 
course, will help Neerus anyway. Even though we don't need to get out of the cathedral. Now, with our crate set, and with Martello set, before we go clear the basement, I'm gonna go ahead and head into the into St. Tenor's factory and make that key so that we can relock the wine cellar door. Since I haven't done it yet, let's take a look at the map. We're in the cloister right now. Up to the north, there's a cemetery. We have St. Fales, which is a library. There's the cloister gate to the east. I'm not really sure what St. Janelle's is, but it's a building with some stuff in it. St. Tenor's is a factory with a workyard behind it. St. Yours is obviously the dormitory. There's a garden here, and this building in front is the cathedral itself, which we also have a fairly detailed map of. So anyway, while we're down here, I'm gonna head into St. Tenor's and make the wine cellar key. I won't loot the rest of St. Tenor's yet. Now when you're in here, no one actually comes into the room, but they do come to this light patch and can see inside, so be careful. Step 1. Position one of the molds on the four pegs in front of the smelting cauldron. Step 2. Push the left lever back to close the mold. Step 3. Pull the right lever forward to tip the cauldron. When the gauge on the wall indicates that the mold is full, tip the cauldron back up by pushing the right lever back. Step 4. Pull the left lever forward to open the mold. Remove the newly manufactured item. Builder be praised. And since we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and make the holy symbol we'll need later too. But one thing at a time. Place the key-shaped mold there. Close it. Now, that gauge over there on the wall, once the needle is in the red, the item is ready. Much as it might astonish you, none of the controllers will alert to any of the noises that this makes. Now here's something interesting. Do you have to return the wine cellar key? I don't think so. If it didn't exist at the beginning of the mission, then I think the way to leave things as they were is to carry that out with you so it still doesn't exist at the end. If you disagree with that interpretation, Feel free to come drop the key here in the f here by the smelter once you're done with it. We need to wait for the factory to clear out so we can drop the key mold mostly back where we found it. We aren't really able to get it under that shelf, but oh, what do you know? I guess we can. Now grab the one shaped like a hammer. Like I said, we'll go ahead and get this over with since we're here. Same thing with the holy symbol. You can drop it from your inventory, but since it didn't exist at the beginning, I think leaving it here is more of a ghost violation than taking it out of the mission with us. So now just remove the mold, put it back. Perfect. And now we're ready to sneak back to the cathedral and loot the basement. Getting out can be difficult. Should be noted that the seven cloister patrollers, where they go, which direction they turn, how far they go at any given time, is pretty well randomized. But they all have the same parameters which are to randomly walk a huge route, which really does cover the entire cloister. Let's go back to the, well, I'll talk more about that when we're ready to really infiltrate the cloister and loot it properly. For now, since we have the key we need, 
Let's go loot the basement of the cathedral. The basement itself is pretty easy as long as two things are true. Be careful not to splash when you're in the water and don't turn on the lights. There are two patrollers down here. There's a zombie and a hammer spirit, but they're both very easy to avoid. With the wine cellar key, we can unlock this door. There are three bottles of wine in here, 50 each. Bring our total to 865. And there's another corpse, the body of Brother Reno. Which we're gonna wanna go ahead and bring with us. Relock the wine cellar door, which was the purpose of the entire side trip to the tenor factory. We can just drag Reno with us for now as we finish clearing the basement. These guys are also pretty partially randomized. He can walk a full circle around the basement, or he can also turn around and walk the other way at any time, so... It's pretty hard to get spotted, because the whole basement is... Almost the whole basement is a perfect shadow, but you don't want to get heard. Be careful of the pressure plate there, you can sort of see it. It'll drop some bricks out of the ceiling. Grab that candlestick, worth 50, brings our total to 915. Don't forget poor brother Reno. Up here, in what looks like it was once a pantry, there's another gold candlestick worth 50, brings our total to 965. I guess I should mention that over in those barrels, you can also find two water arrows. If you're collecting those. Oops, splash too much. Got a little bit, see there, you can see the water arrows. Got a little bit greedy. Started splashing. I'm not greedy, I mean, of course I'm greedy. Greed is the motivating factor for this whole game. I got a little impatient. It looks like the zombie might just be walking full circles, but the uh, spirit, at least, is definitely a random turner. Down at the end of this room, you can find two silver nuggets, five s 50 each, five stacks of copper coins, five each, and three stacks of silver coins, 12 each. When we leave this room, our loot total will be 1126. <laughs> There's nothing inside that mechanized safe. There we go. <clears throat> now I'll point out one other thing on the way out. That's everything we need from down here. But I'll, I'll complete the circle just to allow you to see everything. This room houses the generator, which when activated will turn on some lights, which we obviously don't want, and will activate the elevators throughout the entire complex, which we don't need to use. If you're playing Supreme, of course, at the end of the mission, you would have to sneak back down into the basement and turn off the generator. Since we don't need it on, I'm just going to leave it off. Finally, down that hall is a fairly primitive toilet. And that's it. We're done in the basement. So, as we leave... I'm going to take Brother Reno and drop him in the same place we dropped Brother Martello in the crates. It's just an excellent place to leave everything we need eventually need. I 
didn't want that noise, but it doesn't sound like anyone heard us, so... <gasps> Either time, which is pretty lucky. Okay, with that, the cathedral is clear, and we're ready to grab the eye. So, if we head through this door, we'll find ourselves right at the altar. Getting, and... It's worth a real save before attempting this. I'm gonna use Clotramus's method for actually grabbing the eye. It's far and away the most clever I've ever seen. Because it gives you an immediate escape back into some good shadows. So... Okay, I need to do a better job with the shot. Need it to be a little closer to sticking straight out of the wall so Garrett can grab it. But if you fire a rope arrow into this west wall, and Garrett manages to climb said arrow instead of hitting the greased rope bug over and over and over again. I don't think I fired that quite high enough. Maybe I did. What this allows you to do is pretty important. When you, uh... First, you can get onto the altar silently. If you aim your jump just so you hit the infamous silent edge. Then, of course, you have to immediately arrest your momentum to stop from taking a clanky step. And then, you have to quickly... And I mean quickly, because the second you grab it, everybody turns and runs for the altar. Grab the eye and jump back to the rope, where you'll immediately find yourself in a perfect shadow. Right here. Out of everyone's reach. Then you have to wait and make sure no one spotted you. And then you can wait for the scripted alert to settle down and make your escape. So that's what we're going to do. Oh yes, you also have to wait for the hammer haunt to face east. Or south. South. Well, east would be even better. I almost forgot. Well, not almost. I did forget. Let's so just watch and wait for him to turn. In the meantime, I'm going to hunt for the right jump height. To hit that awesome silent edge. Okay, found it. I think this is it. No, it's lower than that. Once I find it, I'm gonna leave a save there. Oops. I didn't expect to have my shot to grab the eye. You have to arrest your momentum. Of course. And then you have to do a better job jumping, actually jumping back to the road. Now that you have attained your prize, can you escape with your skin? So there was the scripted alert. Now everyone's on the move, but the scripted alert is over. So you just have to wait until you have enough space to retrieve your rope arrow, and then get out of here. You have to be careful that close to the door, of course. If you're too low, these guys will bump into you. Uh, 
Now we just need to get out. That hiss from the apper from the hammer spirit is a first alert. So be on the lookout for that sound. Obviously, the guys on the second floor can see you cross that room, so you have to be wary of them as well. But now, we're out. If you try to leave through the front door, you discover that the eye has locked it. Thinks that would be too easy and wants you to find a different way. But, we have grabbed the eye. That was brilliant! Now here's Brother Miris, and for me, the mission just takes a nosedive from here and never recovers. Welcome to the majestic and splendid Hammer Cathedral. How pleasing to welcome new initiates into our fold. I am Brother Muris, and I will be thy spiritual guide. I see that thou art tired from your journey, so I'll leave thee be. But if thou needst my help, I can be found down in the cloister. If you want to go over... If you want to sneak around the Hammer Spirit, at the other end of the garden there's a fountain which has a single water arrow for you. But I have no interest. Aha! Our newest acolyte! Thou seems to have gotten thyself into some trouble, hmm? And from the looks of thee, I'd say thou art used to trouble. Well, I can help thee escape this desolate place, if thou wilt help me with something, since thou clearly camest here to collect things. Thou can start by collecting some things from me. All brothers have rosary beads, so thou need some too. Thou canst borrow mine. I think I left them in my room. I remember that it was so nice to look out over the fountain in the garden. So be a good lad and bring me my rosary. Now, if I'm going to end up stacking objects to leave, you may wonder why I'm bothering to help with Brother Beerus at all, instead of just looting the cathedral, grabbing the eye, then stacking everything and leaving. The reason is that the ghost rules require us to complete all objectives and as you see we have an objective to aid the ghost of brother Miris in order to escape so having been directed to go acquire a rosary we want to go into St. Yoras which is the dormitory but as we sweep Yoras we want to make the other exit or take the other entrance. <gasps> oh, this is not good. <gasps> that is not good either. This is a good spot to wait until the coast is clear. <clears throat> Alright, that's the turnaround point. They sometimes wander all the way into the garden. Not this time! You 
now that there's a friendly ghost hanging around, I just, I don't know, the, the sense of isolation is gone, and it takes a lot of the pressure off. That's why I don't like Miras. This corner is safe from the patrols, even though it's not a perfect shadow. But you want to get up into this office as soon as you can and grab the vase here. Worth 100 brings the total to 1226. Now, watching out for patrollers. Well, we have to liberate this stuck zombie with a quick load. Oh no. Can we nudge him? I don't know. I don't know how to operate with that zombie stuck there. Maybe his, maybe his buddy will free him when he shows up and walks into him. That's my only hope. He looks like he's headed right for him. Yes! Teamwork! Way to go, boys! Oh, no. So much for that. I was so happy when I saw him turn when his buddy came to him. Well, anyway, I need to go down that hall to get a piece of loot. So I'll loot the upstairs for now and... Well, maybe his stuckness includes not seeing me. No such luck. Well, we'll go clear the upstairs first. Well, no, I need to do this now because I don't want to have to backtrack here. How far back was my last real save? Not very far. Welcome to the majestic and splendid Hammer Cathedral. How pleasing to welcome new initiates into our fold. I am Brother Muris, and I will be thy spiritual guide. I see that thou art tired from your journey, so I'll leave thee be. But if thou needst my help, I can be found down in the cloister. Fucking glitches, I swear. Aha, our newest acolyte. Thou seems to have gotten thyself into some trouble, hmm? And from the looks of thee, I'd say thou art used to trouble. Well, I can help thee escape this desolate place, if thou wilt help me with something. Since thou clearly camest here to collect things, thou can start by collecting some things from me. Our brothers have heard of Alright, I'm hoping that the extra speed somehow helped us avoid that stuck zombie. I'll count our I'll count myself very lucky if it did. I don't think it did. Nope, he's already stuck. Uh, there's gotta be something I can do about this. If someone out he did move when another patroller showed up, so maybe if I do a quick save quick load in that instance, 
I can get him freed. Haunt didn't even jostle him. Can we nudge him ourselves? <laughs> well, that'll get him out of the wall. Hmm. It's just it's too bright to sneak down. Can't even... Can't even get started. Usually only nudge stationary AIs. That's the problem here. I don't know, maybe this will work. That didn't do it either. Uh, let's go ahead and loot upstairs. At least we can grab the rosary. There are three zombies up here. Plenty of shadows to hide in. But they are unpredictable in their patrol route, so still worth some caution. <laughs> oh, that's not a safe spot. Who knew? I thought that was a safe spot, but it's not. Good to know. They are spread out in about the worst possible formation for me. Really? Unbelievable. Oh, there's reading. I am racked with the agony of guilt. The Master Builder cannot spare the cursed coward that I have become. If only I could bring myself to confess what I know about the death of Brother Murus. His soul will never rest unless we perform the ritual of consecration upon his grave. But the priests will surely ask why such a thing need be done, and I am too weak a Builder's servant to face their wrath. Interesting, so... Some shenanigans went down on our brother Muris. 
Oh yeah, I decided not to wait here because this isn't actually a safe spot. So I can't wait out the zombie there. This one is gonna, about to get stuck on the bunk bed. What a pain. Oh, there he got clear. Good. Our friend turned around and headed back the other way. Oh, nope. He's, he's coming this way after all. Make up your damn mind. Sorry. I'm not really that annoyed with this part, but I am extremely irritated with the stuck zombie downstairs messing up my plans. You know, you can lean through that rubble and grab a purse worth a hundred. Brings your total to 1326. And as you have an opportunity, finally sneak over here. And this, I think, is a perfect shadow. But you can't quite reach the chest from here. You'll have to step into the light to pick it, so be careful of that. Pick the lock on the chest as you have opportunities. and get Muris's rosary. Now we can't relock the chest, but we can drop the rosary, so that means we're going to have to return it at the end of the mission. After we perform the ritual of consecration. Now, I'm just running an experiment to see if the downstairs zombie is still stuck. He is, so I'm gonna have to try to approach the loot in that room from the other side. This isn't gonna work. Oh, what do you know? Perfect shadow right there. I had no idea. So move through here. Slip into this room. This, I think, is the Tomb of St. Yora. There's one of these in each building. And they always have something useful nearby. This one has three water arrows on it. As we head downstairs, we arrive on the other side of the dining room kitchen area. You'll notice a stationary zombie there. He's the one guarding the piece of loot we need. I'll clear the kitchen first. On the floor, there's a gold plate, 50, total 1376. There's a gold goblet in the fireplace, worth 25, total 1401. There is a fire arrow up there in the rafters. Now, the, patro the three patrollers, the two zombies in the haunt, will come all the way into the kitchen, so you're safe in this shadow here on the north side of the room so you can wait until the coast is clear and since that guy is stuck I am gonna have to try to get all the way across the room from this side without tripping any alerts I hate dealing with glitches the missions were hard enough when they worked the way they were supposed to. That's what I say. But... Let's see if we can... I just don't know. Let's see if we can manage a silent... silent mount onto that table. Well, that might not be necessary. Maybe I should just... Stick to the edge. There's a first alert, but... Okay, well... 
That's not working. I think if I can silently get over the table, that's my best bet. First alerts about. And there's a ghost bust. Okay, I'm gonna make a real save here. So I can use my quick saves trying to get across the kitchen. So. Let's, let's go for the silent, silent mount. Nothing but a first alert there, that's good. Let's try and get over this chair now. Same idea. Except I'm not even landing on the chair. Nothing but first alerts there. Uh, I don't know if the patrollers are going to catch me here, so I need to be careful of that, too. So anyway, those first alerts have busted Supreme, but Supreme busts are inevitable anyway. Both exiting the mission no matter what and getting that piece of loot because of a funky little AI script that these zombies have, they'll move on a first alert. Just a little bit, but it's enough for us to get the loot he's guarding, so getting that loot also requires a first alert. So I think the key here is speed. Maybe not. You see that? That was only... That was only a first alert, but he squirted out a little bit. while his back is turned we can pass it and incidentally that's pretty similar to how we're going to deal with getting loot in the other alcove all right now this guy i think speed is of the essence okay he's still stuck so if we first alert him, we can dart in while he does his little pivot, get the loot, and get back out. Oh good, he's doing it. Okay. Now with all that done, that plate was worth 50, brings our total to 14.51. And I think they'll only do the turn once each. So now we've got to get back out without triggering more than a first alert from either zom any of the zombies. We gotta move pretty fast too, because the patrollers are on their way back. Alright, good. Dealt with the glitch. Got the loot. 
Oh, so anyway, let me explain in more detail what just happened. We're going to do something like it when we get back down to the basement of St. Janelle's. Those stationary zombies have a script that causes them to patrol briefly if they're first alerted and you're close enough to them. They only do it once. They walk a little loop outside and then they return to their alcove. But that script allows you to get the loot that they guard. If you first alert them and they don't see you, they'll do their little turn and that's the end of the scripted patrol. While their back is turned, you can bounce in and get the loot. It's probably, well, I won't even say probably. It's an engine exploit. It busts Supreme for sure because it relies on a first alert. But I like getting the loot. And I got angry at the game for hitting me with a glitch. A stuck patroller, so I'm glad we were able to solve that with nothing but first alerts. Let's move on. What's Miras want now? Aha, what a wonderful looter thou art. Thou hast found my rosary. I have some other things for thee to do as well. Confound it, I seem to have misplaced my prayer book. Novice, please go get it for me. It's called the Prayer of Consecration. I don't have any idea where I was last reading it. All right. And like I said, I'm going to hold the holy symbol, the eye, obviously, and the wine cellar key because they are either objectives or they didn't exist at the start of the mission, so there's nowhere to replace them. The rosary, I'm going to have to return at the end. So, now... I'm going to head into St. Janelle's. Two things in here right away. A gold hammer on the pile of bones. It's worth 75, brings our total to 1526. In this side room, a stack of gold coins worth 25, brings our total to 1551. Now if you can get to this shadow, you're pretty safe. So first thing I'm going to do is just drop down to the lower level. And then there are a couple of things to do here. First, I'm going to use a rope arrow so I can silently mantle over into this room. Retrieve the rope arrow. While we're in here, I need to slide down behind this zombie get his vase, which is worth 50, and brings our total to 1601. Then we need to get the cemetery key out of this chest. The cemetery key is another thing we will have to return once we're done using it. Pretty frequently, one of the four cloister hammer haunts ends up stuck down at the bottom of this elevator. But we don't want that. It makes it a lot harder to ghost, so... Hopefully we won't get hit with that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go after the other... weird little bit of loot. First things first, here at St. Janelle's tomb, there are three moss arrows. Now this... this zombie, he has that same proximity triggered mini patrol. He's behind this door right in front of us. But what he'll do is he'll veer off to one side or the other when that mini patrol is triggered. Anyway. If you come straight at the door, he'll do the mini patrol. Now, Clotramus has a method for doing this that I haven't been able to replicate, but I have found a different way. It relies on a bit of an engine exploit, but I'll show you what I mean. If we approach from the left, then the zombie will come and catch us. Same thing happens if we approach from the right. Like that. If we approach straight on, zombie comes straight out. But, the way you can finagle it 
is if you approach straight on and then veer and get into a good shadow so he doesn't see you. Uh, which I, I guess I wasn't fast enough that time. Maybe I was too fast. I don't know. See, he'll walk straight out. He'll do his little loop. And now Clotramus says that he can get him to do the little turn. F first alert, turn. <laughs> when he repositions there. I've never managed to do that. Do I have a real save here? Okay, good. But... <laughs> try to show you Clotramus' method first. At least what he says works. <laughs> Swung too close. Uh, Alright, Clotremus says this is the ideal position. He claims that now uh, if we uh, if we manage to do nothing but first alert the zombie, he'll do the little shuffle, like the one in St. Yoris did. I don't know. Uh, as you can see, he didn't do it. The method I've discovered relies on a well-timed quick save and quick load. Let me show you. If we can replicate that walk straight out, quick save, quick load, before his patrol is finished, he'll stop facing into the room. If we do that... I need to give him a little more space, but if I let him walk in far enough, we're able to lean past him and get the hammer. Sure, it's a glitch, but the game tried to screw me over with a glitch a little bit ago, so I don't feel bad about it at all. Now with him here, we can nab the hammer shut the door behind him no alerts at all the hammer is worth 75 and brings our loot total to 1676 obviously that engine exploit also busts supreme but perfect thief normal ghost remains intact now with all that stuff done we can pick this lock the door is not relockable and we can head up to the observatory there's a fire arrow on the ground here. I think there's a moss arrow on the way up too, somewhere. While we're up here, let's read, first of all. The Master Builder doth surely gaze favorably upon our crusade to subjugate the wild forces of nature with tools built in his name. Here in this tower, with these optic machines, I have learned much about the movements of the lights the Builder hath set above. The divine power of the moon and stars hath been focused into a pool of water, which I named the Lunar Pool. I hadst hoped the water would show the same properties as holy water, but it doth not. However, it must hold the Builder's grace, for it doth bestow the Builder's blessing upon holy symbols immersed in the pool. I shall investigate this further, drawing forth knowledge for the glory of the Builder, Brother Reno. Oh, interesting. Let's see what happens. Boom. Blessed holy symbol from the lunar pool. You can open the observatory roof and play with the telescope if you want, but you know the technology wasn't that advanced. It's not like you can look through the telescope or anything. Anyway, that's everything from down here. So we'll get back out, all the way back out of St. Janelle's the way we came in. I guess that's an answer for what St. Janelle's is. 
It's an observatory. All right. And I still don't have a haunt stuck down here. That's good. How's this? Getting in and out of the cloister thing. Oh. Garrett, 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 grab the rope. Sound like Barry Burton. Grab the rope. <laughs> All right. This exit's tough to use. Kind of just have to hope the cloister's empty or everyone's back is turned when you go for it. But hey, sometimes hope is enough. Head this way. This bathhouse on the right has three water arrows inside the pool if you're interested. None of the patrols cover this white this path back here, which is nice. Behind St. Janelle's. So this will be our route to St. Vale's. Uh, here's somebody close by. Sounds like someone's stuck. Yeah, they'll get stuck on the door. But uh, a quick load is usually sufficient to free them. Now there's not much in St. Vale's. There's Neurus's prayer book, so we do need to go in there. Other than that, all there is is a healing potion. There's no loot. And one interesting thing is the ha the haunts have a pause inside St. Vale's. They s whenever they go in there, they stand in there for a solid 10-15 seconds before resuming their patrol. There are two inside right now. Need to wait for both to come out. Excellent. So the healing potion is over on St. Vale, what I assume is St. Vale's tomb to the right. Let's read this. Kindle, thou art a naive novice at times. The craftsmanship of the holy symbol thou hast created is not flawed. Thy problem is that a mere initiate such as thyself cannot perform the blessing that implores the builder to transform thy symbol from simple metal into a holy artifact. I wouldst suggest thou ask one of the priests to bless thy holy symbol for you, or it will be of no use. If thou art embarrassed, thou couldst visit the observatory at the top of the tower in St. Janelle's and talk to Brother Renault. He knows of another way to instill holy symbols with the builder's blessing. So, get up to the second floor when no one's around, and pick this up. The Prayer of Consecration. O Master Builder, we ask thee to bless our brother who hath died in thy service. Forgive him the transgressions of his living days, and look with favor on his works in thy name. Plumb and plain, fire and forge, purify his spirit, and draw from him all which does not meet thy plan. Take him to serve with thee in thy home, where he may rest in peace eternal. And now we have the prayer book. The prayer book we can't drop. Garrett will not drop it when you push the drop item key. That means we're under no obligation to return it. Which... Wouldn't matter that much, because St. Vale's is pretty easy to sneak in and out of, but it saves us a step. <clears throat> okay, now, now I guess we'll... After I quick load, so he can move... You'll see the pause firsthand. Well, I don't care that much. There, you heard him stop. Uh oh. Hopefully we can get out behind the hammer spirit before the haunt starts patrolling again. I need to make sure I wasn't spotted just then, because that was pretty 
close. But we're good. Now let's head back to Muris. After all, we have the last thing he asked for. Just kind of need a little bit of. A little bit of good timing is what you need to get through here. There we go. Who would have thought back then that an unsavory character such as thyself could be my salvation? Thank thee for getting that book for me. I need to find a candle I used when I was still alive. The last time I remember using a candle is the night of my death. I was in the workyard, where the well is. My personal possessions were hidden, but I think the candle is back there still. Alright, now, we need to get the um, candle from the workyard behind St. Tenor's, so this is an excellent opportunity to actually loot St. Tenor's, which we didn't do the first time we were here. Okay, let's move a little faster, and I think we can get to that shadow in time. Oh no, we have another stuck zombie! Now this one I don't know how to get past. Because we have to go through that hallway. I mean, we have to. Shit. Alright, well... I don't think... Maybe if I stack, I can jump up onto this ledge and get to the workyard that way. <gasps> oh, but it's on a it's on a slope, so stacking's gonna be tough. <gasps> okay. I do not know what to do here, folks. Having a zombie stuck there really hoses me pretty badly. I suppose his buddies can liberate him, do you? And well. I mean, I'm gonna have to try and mantle over this way. I can probably do it if I use some of those crates from earlier. Wasn't planning on using them just yet, but if the game decides to glitch, we do what we must to combat it. Crate in hand, let's see what we can do. Come on, Garrett, get on the crate. Get on the crate. The, the slope is the problem. That makes accomplishing a stack much more difficult. I just go my usual way. Oh yeah, this is possible. This is definitely possible. Okay, good. tell just by how high I was able to get. This 
This has to be possible. Come on, Garrett. Okay. Well, let's let's try against the wall. Against the wall and potions? Will that work? <gasps> yes. Okay. I'll be back for my potion in a bit. But for now, two things, well, a few things to do. <gasps> Up here, we get Muris's candle and a purse <laughs> worth 100, brings our total to 1776. Now, there's a piece of loot inside St. Tenor's. <sighs> and uh, we're going to have to go in the way we were meant to go out. But that's fine. <gasps> now what I don't know is whether we can jump out of here and get onto the catwalk or if we're gonna have to jump down to the first floor. If we can get to the first floor without alerting anybody, that's, well, it's pretty good, but it leaves us very, very exposed. I would prefer to get onto that catwalk, and I feel like there's gotta be a way. There's no one back here right now, which is good. It gives us a little breathing room. I swear. And there's one lesson to learn here. You know, we abuse some glitches to get the loot, but other glitches are making things a lot harder for us, so glitches are a double-edged sword, that's for sure. Let's move that crate out of your way by picking it up and putting it back down. Uh, we're inside the Tenor Factory, which is good. That's all I wanted. They don't come upstairs unless they hear you, so... Be quiet on the metal floors. Hey, let's let's think positive about this. That's one less zombie moving around the cloister, right? When the time comes, it'll make killing the haunts easier. Got a little careless there, but through this door up here is Saint Tenor's tomb. There are a couple of fire arrows in there. The only thing we needed out of here is this silver nugget. Worth 50 brings our total to 1826. Now we can head back out the same way we came in. To be careful. This little downward ramp. Anytime you're moving down a slope like that, it's pretty hard for Garrett to stay quiet, so. Do a little backwards walking. Solves the problem with style. Avoid exposure, same way. Pick up the crate, put it back down. Get back out to the work yard by going down the coal chute or whatever this thing is. Okay, yeah, he's walking down there right now, so we're gonna wait for that haunt to leave. They take another pause down here at the end of their patrols. He's gone. Drop back out to the workyard. Now on this side, there's a ladder. Which makes things much easier. We can silently drop, get our speed potion back, 
We'll take our crate back as we return to Brother Miras with his candle. Solving problems. Yes, and that is the candle I was using to see the night I died. It will do for our needs. I see that thou hast all of the items we need to perform the ritual of consecration. Meet me at my grave in the cemetery. All right. Let's to save ourselves one trip back here, go ahead and bring Brother Reno as we go to the cemetery to meet Muris. Couldn't even hear that zombie. Looks like everyone's going to the cemetery. My goodness. Those shadows in the middle of the ramp up to the cemetery are perfect shadows. You can... Even if a patroller walks by you on that street, they won't see you, which is good news for us. Otherwise, we have to wait for that zombie to patrol all the way back out and hope that no one else came in in the process. But instead, we can follow the zombie up here and wait for him to go by right here. Now, it's not too hard to move around in the cemetery. There are a lot of lights to watch out for, and there are four zombies patrolling, but there are also plenty of shadows, so... No big concerns there. Unlock it with the key. Bring Reno with us. It's easier to break left. This is a pretty good shadow right away. Save here. Survey the disposition of the zombies. If you can get over to this corner unseen, that's good. It's a good place to leave <coughs> Reno. And there's also a piece of loot here. Another gold hammer. 75 brings our total to 1901. For that, we can follow this zombie. Check that out. Here lies Brother Reno. Oh, I wonder what that means. And this... quadrant, if you will, of the graveyard. There's another piece of loot I want to get when I have an opening to do so. And then we'll go deal with Muris. That lit grave over in the northwest corner has another gold hammer. Worth 75... Brings our total to 1976. Alright, let's, let's do Muris's ritual now. Let us begin, my friend. Wave the rosary over my tombstone. Now place the candle on my tombstone. Read the prayer of consecration. Master Builder, we ask thee to bless our brother who hath died in thy service. Forgive him the transgressions of his living days, and look with favor on his works in thy name. Plumb and plain, fire and forge, purify his spirit, and draw from him all which does not meet thy plan. Take him to serve with thee in thy home, where he may rest in peace eternal. Touch my tombstone with the holy symbol. At last! My prayers have been answered. My soul is finally free. Acolyte, thou hast saved me from eternal unrest. But I need thee to help my friends from life as well. I've prepared their final resting places for them, but I need thee to place their bodies in their graves. The first is Brother Renault. He died in the cellar of the cathedral. Please, go get his body and place it in his grave. Alright. Well, thanks to our prep work, we've got Renault's body. 
right by his grave. Just need to wait for the zombies to give us a little breathing room. And we just need to drop it in there. Please go get the body of Brother Rino and place it in his grave. By thy hand, I can finally depart this earth and go to the Builder's home. It is only fitting that I reward thee. In the winter tunnels beneath the cloister, seek thee a room with a mural on one of the walls. In the upper right-hand corner of this mural, spy out a hidden button. Press that button. Thou hast what thou wilt find there, and my full thanks. Farewell. Need to get our next goal. Please bury Brother Martello. He died in the cathedral attic. Simple enough. Let's go get Brother Martello. We know where he is. We dropped him at the cloister entrance with our crates. Okay. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Need to wait a bit before I try for the exit. I just, I start to get so impatient when I'm close to the end, but while I think that's fairly normal human behavior, it's still not good. Results in a lot of busts. I just have to hope no one's on their way up here you go to make your exit. Uh, before we grab Brother Martello, since we're done with it, I am going to go ahead and return Muris's rosary. And I'm also going to read a book that I skipped while I'm in there. Not quite time to kill the haunts yet, but it's next after Brother Martello. So let's head back up to St. Yours. Let's sneak up this way. Another stuck zombie. This seems to happen a lot. Did he unstick? Or is that a different one? It's a different one. Okay, well, we may still be able to get in through the other entrance. I tell you, the longer you're in here, the more sticking points there will be. We need to try and get to that book with no more than a first alert. Okay, it doesn't look like that's gonna work. Try coming from the other side. Uh, 
The priest shall no longer doubt their decision to give me allowance to convert the unused storage room in the winter tunnels into an alchemy laboratory. This day my research hath yielded much, as I have created a most useful explosive device. It is my belief that in times of war we will be able to use such explosives to force open the gates of the strongholds of our foes. The device is quite dangerous, so I have stored it in the armory in the cathedral attic. With all that, just head back down to the cloister. We'll try the other entrance to St. Yoras to put the rosary back. <sighs> what in the... I did not think he came that far. Interesting. <gasps> Come on. Come on. Come on, G. There, of course, is our first stuck zombie. Oh, looks like they're both stuck now. I bet if you waited long enough, every zombie would get stuck somewhere. Well, hell, there's two stuck zombies. That means there's only one still moving. Which actually might serve to make this easier. Anyway. Let's just drop the rosary. On top of the box is the best we can do. Since two of the three zombies are stuck, we just have to track this guy as we make our way out, which shouldn't be that hard. He's stuck. Both of them are stuck, so now the haunt is the only patroller we have to worry about. Now we'll bury Brother Martello. As soon as we can get back out of here. Martello. Let's get all the way back to the cemetery. Looks like no one's up there right now. Which is <coughs> lucky for us. Again. This time we're actually headed left, which makes things easier. Be wary, though, of that weird bright patch in the middle of what looks like a shadow. Alright, drop Martello in here. Now I must ask thee for one last thing. These haunts who inhabit the bodies of my brethren. They must all be killed. Alright, it's time to go on a hammer haunt hunt. There are nine haunts in the mission. Four of them are in the cloister. We'll start with those. Kill all of the hammer haunts and return here for thy reward. 
There are four in the cloister, one in the winter tunnels, which is the one place we haven't been yet, one in St. Yora's, and three in the cathedral. Now this is a pretty bad place to attack the haunts unless you manage to find one by itself. But it's a great place. Oops. I don't want to be right in front of the door there. But it's a great place to watch them to see when one wanders off by himself. Because if you can get them alone in one of the buildings, that's ideal. And it looks like now there's one alone in St. Janelle's. sure no one outside heard that. Seems like we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and drop him down, stash him down in the lower level. Okay, good. We still don't have a haunt stuck down here. The ghost becomes much more complicated if a haunt gets stuck because the zombies almost always hear you kill it if it's down at the bottom of the elevator shaft. Now as far as killing the haunts goes, obviously the kill is not a bust because it's explicitly required by an objective, but some people don't want the damage to show up in the statistics. So even though killing the haunts isn't a bust, to avoid the damage showing up in the stats, they'll kill the haunts by throwing hammers at them. That damage doesn't show up in the stats, but the ghost rules say that you can't rely much on the stats anyway because, as is the case here, some damage may be excusable, like when you're explicitly required to kill something, and some damage may not show up in the stats. An example of that is the fact that you can slaughter every hammerite in undercover and have zero damage show up in the stats, so... What's more important is just the knowledge that we're following the rules. So, we'll take the damage in the stats, we'll use our sword for once, and we will kill the haunts that way. There are three more cloister haunts to kill. Two of them have headed to St. Vale's. Looks like another one might be headed into St. Janelle's. Where he, he'd be alone if we could make it, but the zombie seems to be following him in, so... We'll have to wait. Kill him somewhere else. One down, eight to go. Three in the cloister. Is he gonna chill out in there? Okay, he's done. I was worried that after all my celebratory talk of not getting the bug, that one had just fallen down the elevator, but nope, nope, we're good. The single best place to ambush them is if one wanders off by himself up the cemetery road, like our friend here has just chosen to do. I have to wait till he's far enough away that he doesn't hear the gate open. But he's by himself up here. Lay it down. Make sure none of the zombies over in the cemetery heard it. Stash the body over here. Two down, seven to go. Two in the cloister. Let's get back to our vantage point.
Well, I've got a I've got a bead on both the ones that are left. Looks like they're both headed to St. Vale's right now. Doesn't really help us. We can't kill them if they're together like that, so we'll have to wait for them to split up. Like he's alone. And there's no one else out here. Let's bag him right quick right now. <laughs> Listen around, make sure no one heard it. Three down, six to go. One in the cloister. You can finally move on from the cloister after this is done. There's the last one in the cloister. Well, we can't follow him into St. Tenor's because of the stuck zombie. Zombie heads in the tenors. That would be perfect. Excellent. 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 All right, four down, five to go. That's it for the cloister. the one in St. Yours now. <gasps> what the hell? Okay, there he is. I think it's probably easiest, and this has gotten much easier since the two zombies got stuck inside. I think if you can get the timing right, it's probably easiest to get this haunt out here in the garden. Seems like no one heard it. That's good. That's good. That's five down, four to go. He was the only one in St. Yours. And now, because those guys are stuck, as weird as it is, weird as it is St. Yours is cleared out. And so, for the most part, is the garden. Still have the hammer spirit there, but having him be the only thing to worry about when we make our exit is going to make things a lot easier. Now that this is no longer a patrol path, with the zombies being stuck. 
I'm gonna move the crates up he back up here because this is where we'll eventually need them in order to leave. Just gonna set them in. Right there. Bring the other one up here too. It'll be the same thing. You can't leave them here in supreme mode when patrollers will still run into them, but since the stuck zombies mean that's no longer a patrol path, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the crates up here. They're positioned for our eventual exit. I am gonna try and handle the haunts in the cathedral now. It's the same idea, it's just, it's tough to execute in here, but wait for one to be by himself and then make him dead. Trying to think of what the best ambush point in here would be. It might be the stairs. Now that I think about it. Except there's nowhere good to hide. That's the problem. You know, I'm thinking about it and I'm drawn to either this room if it happens to be empty which it isn't here the main room is probably out just because of traffic and the fact that slaughtering a haunt is really loud I'm thinking the second floor on either side or that hallway might be really good places Yeah, with a stationary zombie there, it's almost impossible to set up a decent ambush anywhere in the main room. I'm watching them, and I'm realizing they come through these hallways. Either of which would be a great ambush point because they can't hear. Nothing can be heard outside this hallway. I don't think anyway. I don't know though. I'm most comfortable with the idea of this room if you can manage to get one in here by himself. This room is empty right now, so if one were to come in, he'd be by himself. Barely timed that right, but we did six down, three to go. That includes two here in the cathedral. Good place to stash the body. That corner right there is fine. I'm thinking he's on his way down right now and we'll have a little window. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just like now. That zombie's arrival was rather untimely. I'll tell you what, if there weren't a zombie in this hallway, it'd be a great time to attack. But there is a zombie in that hallway. Let's follow him back toward the stairs. Maybe that room will be empty. We got it. Seven down, two to go. There's still one more inside the cathedral. Is. I think he might be headed for the stairs. If he just times it so he ends up alone. Ah, fudge. There's a zombie right with him. And the hammer spirit, too. It's like they've noticed all their buddies gradually disappearing under banding together to protect the ones that are left. I think if I'm fast. I'll be able to intercept the last one in this hallway. Yes. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. I have to wait for the zombie to pass by. But that's eight down. One to go, and that's it for the cathedral. Good news all around. We can leave him over behind the altar. That's a fine stash point. Now we're done in the cathedral. We're never coming back. Thank goodness, too. That place is rough. There's only one haunt left. He's down in the winter tunnels, which is the one place we haven't looted yet, either. Moving around is much easier, with most of the patrols disposed of. Silently drop down here. Of course, I may make the journey up to the armory, because there's a note there. But if you come over here, in St. Janelle's, and I think only in St. Janelle's, there's a ladder in and out of the tunnels. Everywhere else, you have to use a... you have to turn the elevators on. The tunnels are pretty easy to sneak through. There's just one wandering zombie. There are two things worth looking at. We'll go this way first. 
This is the mural Brother Renault directed us to. I'm going to leave it be, but if you look at the row of like little orange circles up above the mural itself, the far right one is a secret button that when pressed will open a door you can't reclose, which is why I'm leaving it alone. But inside that room, you can find a holy water, a moss arrow, a mine, and four water arrows. Like I said, I'm not interested. Okay, and here are our final haunt over here. And just so we can say we did, let's make sure to sneak by him and... Oh, he's stuck anyway. Make sure to sneak by him and get all of his loot before you kill him. If such a thing is possible with him stuck, I admit I'm skeptical. We might have to kill him just to get around the fact that he's stuck, but maybe not. Let's see. It'd be nice if we could jump over this counter, but I'm not sure we can. Not without an alert, at least. And of course, with him stuck, I think sneaking by him is out. Maybe if we creep. It's always worth trying. Oh, not good enough. That's not gonna work. That's too much. I mean, it obviously won't be a bust to kill him, but I'd like to sneak by him without doing so, if I can. But I'm just not convinced I can. So maybe if I stack some stuff, I can get over the counter. Let's try that. Hold on. Let's do a real save before we start stacking stuff. That way, of course, I can quick save at my leisure, but he's probably close enough to hear me drop this. Maybe not. Oh yeah, he heard it. Okay, what if I drop it straight down? Let's try our, let's try dropping our potions. Same way. Heck, let's even use our keys. <gasps> Everything we can drop, let's <gasps> drop. Except, let's do it a little bit closer to the counter. <gasps> too close, too close. Back up a little. Try again. This looks ideal. that the speed potion may have actually been a little too much if I do just that and leave the other stuff. Let's try this. Yes! Alright, there's a diamond in here, worth 100, brings the total to 2076. 
And I think inside the chest is the last... Nope, that's a holy water. We don't need that. Must be back here. There's one other piece of loot in here somewhere. There it is. And a silver nugget worth 50 brings our total to 2126, which is all the loot in the mission. So let's, let's rebuild our stack, get back over the counter. I did all that just so I could say that I did, in fact, sneak past the last hammer haunt. In spite of one... In spite of the fact that he did become one last stuck patroller. It's always such a problem. Yeah, I can't do that. Let's stack a little more. Stack doesn't seem to be working as well this time, but... Let's try again. I know right up against it is too much. Yeah. Here, maybe? Yes, good. Next. Worked like a charm. Next. Didn't work the way I wanted it to. about this. I thought maybe I could do some trick leaning to just squeeze between there because the stack isn't working as well on this side. On the other hand, maybe I can just get close enough to whack him. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Simple. Elegant in its simplicity. <laughs> there you go. That little chime means that was the last haunt. So put the skull back. No one will find his corpse in this room, but... We'll stash it in the shadows all the same. And with that, we'll return to Muris. Alert to the last zombie, of course. Well, I say last. There are plenty of others, but... Back to the cemetery one last time. Oh, let's 
Wait for a more opportune moment to go in there. Having all that done is definitely worth a real save. Okay. Thou hast been a great help to me, friend, and I owe thee great thanks. I wish I could give thee the key to the cloister gate, but that is long lost. Take this key instead. It opens the armory in the attic. There is something up there that a crafty person like thee will find useful. I go now to my rest. Once again, I thank thee. Alright, that's it for Brother Miras. Now, I'm gonna leave the armory key floating there where it is. Because... I don't want to have to return it. Since I'm not using the explosive device anyway. Lock the cemetery. Let's return the cemetery key. You might wonder why I don't think blowing open the gate is excused. Well, it's because there is another way out. And given the fact that there is another way out, we don't have an explicit objective to blow open the gate, so... Leaving the leaving the crate stack is another supreme bust, but it's preferable to busting ghost with the massive explosion that's entailed in leaving through the cloister. Even though that is what the designers intended. Oh, can't have that. Trouble at the very end almost always happens. So, get up the rope. Hope Garrett mantles this time. Nope. No such luck. How about now? Nope. How about now? Very good. Now, I don't know how close we can drop the key without getting hurt by Bozo the Clown here. Let's give it a whirl. Oh. We can drop it right on top of the box, which is usually the best we can do. Is there anything else I need to return? This I created, so there's nowhere to return it to. Same with this. Garrett can't drop the prayer book. And that's everything. So... Back out of here. This really is the last time. So wave goodbye to St. Janelle's. Of course, Muris is gone now, but with the haunts gone, most of the pressure's off. So now, we want to get back to the garden where we left our crates. Mantle up here and just be watchful for the hammer spirit. Okay, try not try not to do that. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Alright. Now first we just need to get both crates down at ground level right here in front of the support pillar. And then we need to drop them. As always. I like to look I like well, you can't have them hit each other like that. So I'm gonna Okay, 
think I got the other one enough out of the way now. The easiest way to do this is to look straight up and jump while they're in midair. And with that, you can usually you're usually able to mantle up onto the walkway. Looks like I might need a third crate. I hope not, but I might. Or I can use one of my potions. Or other objects. Let's go with the good old fashioned potions. There we go. <laughs> I think we need to do a little more stacking here. Let's try it with the symbol, the wine cellar key. Yeah. Let's do the potions first, because we need to bring one of these crates along with us, so... I think we're about to get spotted. I'm just going to get a third crate. I mean, this should work. Just the two. I've done this before. with that. It is clear I need to get something else for the stack. Let's 
see what I can find in St. Yours. There are a couple of vases in here. That well, a vase and a couple of bottles. Regardless, that ought to fit the bill. If I put this at the bottom of the stack, then grab the crates. That might be enough. but I have to grab one of these crates on the way up, so... Check this move out as soon as I manage it. Come on. There, perfect. Now we've got a crate up here, which is exactly what I need. it out. So you'll notice the, uh, the interesting places where stuff does and doesn't exist. Uh, don't worry too much about that. Just get back outside the cathedral. Now, oddly enough, when you're here, it doesn't think you're gone yet, but if you head around back, the objective will tick off. I think so, anyway. I hope so, or I might be in trouble. Oh yeah, that doesn't work. Obviously out. Now you have your precious eye. What do you hope to do with me? That does it. All right. There you have it. Perfect thief in the haunted cathedral. Failed Supreme by using a few AI glitches and uh, leaving our, using a few engine exploits, tripping some first alerts, and leaving our stack of objects in the garden before we escaped, but all things considered, not too bad. That took 1 hour, 40 minutes, 51 seconds. We found 2126 loot out of 2126, picked 5 locks, there it is, 9 backstabs, no knockouts. 
270 damage dealt, 30 damage per haunt. Damage taken zero, healing taken zero. Innocents killed none, others killed nine, that's the nine haunts. Campaign totals, spend 28 hours, 56 minutes, 14 seconds. We have 30,150 loot. We've dealt 290 damage, the nine haunts in this mission, plus the 20 to the training dummy and sparring partner in the training mission. We have still received no damage. Like I said, with all the loot, that's Perfect Thief in Return to the Cathedral. I will see you next time for far and away the hardest mission in the game, Escape. Bye-bye.